Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, here we are again with week three. So we got our week three games coming up this week, and my overall record so far from the first two weeks is 17, 14, and 1. It's it's not as it's not what I wanted, but it's it's last week was crazy. Last week was an insane week. It was a lot of upsets, a lot of craziness going on, a lot of comebacks, and Clearly, you know about one of the comebacks that happens because I got the jersey on, so whatever. But anyway, guys, we are on to week three. These are going to be my predictions for the week, so let's get right into it. All right, so for our Thursday night game, look, we got the Steelers versus the Browns. Look, this is going to come down to essentially whoever can get the stop or whoever can make the clutches play. And, of course, you know, you're saying, duh, that, of course that's supposed to happen. It's football. But, look, this is going to – look, nobody really cares about this game. This is going to be a very stale offensive game. I think it's going to be a very pretty slow game altogether. It's a divisional game. The Steelers and Browns normally have those type of just very slow, stale offensive games to where it really comes down to whoever can kick the field goal, blah, blah, blah. But just due to the fact that it's really just stale, the old quarterback play out there with Jacoby Brissett and Mitchell Trubisky. It, it's really anybody's game at this point between these two teams. But look, what it really comes down to is me personally, I think the Browns are going to be last in this division. So this is where that journey starts for them. I just don't think they're going to really have enough to pull this win out. Granted, Amari Cooper has looked pretty good these first two weeks. Um, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, you know, they're doing their thing. But at the same time, look, the Browns, <laughs> the Browns let Joe Flacco absolutely obliterate them last week. And granted, Joe Flacco is the, the Browns father. Like he's 18 and three against them all time. He, Joe Flacco just doesn't lose to the Browns, it's as simple as that. But I do think, you know, the fact that Mike Tomlin was just able to make the Steelers' offense work with uh, Duck Hodges, and now, you know, Mitchell Trubisky is hopefully, I, I think Mitchell Trubisky is better than Duck Hodges, I guess we'll find out. But look, I think the Steelers' offense will look a lot better this week. Granted, they don't have T.J. Watt, so I'm kind of torn between this game because I really don't know who to go towards. But Mike Tomlin has just never been below 500. I think the Browns are the going to be the last ones in this division. Like I said, I think this is the start to that journey for the Browns of being last in the division. So I got the Steelers winning this one 23-17. to now look for our next game we got the Bills versus the Dolphins and look I'm not going to sit here and trash on the Dolphins because I want to see them lose because you know essentially the Ravens made had the most piss poor breakdown of a fourth quarter I've ever seen in my life especially the fact that I was there in person like that was just very painful to watch I'm not going to sit here and shit on the Dolphins and say yeah the Bills are going to come step on them the Bills are going to you know destroy them put them in their place blah 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 no I don't I don't have any right to say that but I will say this Tua, Tua Tagovailoa will not have a six TD performance against the Bills defense one because they're a lot better than our defense and two they're just too much of a juggernaut to overcome granted this will be a pretty close game I think this is going to be a tight knit game uh, I just think at the end, you know, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs would just prove to be too much for this team, even if Gabe Davis doesn't play, which I really hope he does. I need him for fantasy. But essentially, if Stephon Diggs is out there, if they go out with the same mob they went out there with on Monday night uh, against the Titans, they can beat this team. Um, the Dolphins will put up a fight, though. This is a divisional game. I, I think Gabe Davis honestly puts the Bills in favor to win this game a little more than just, you know, having Stephon Diggs out there. Because the, the Dolphins' defense is, you know, a lot better than the Titans, of course. But, I mean, they just play a lot of man, and Stephon Diggs is going to kill that man up. And Josh Allen will definitely find a way to dot that, you know, man defense up. So, at the end of the day, I just think the Bills are going to pull this one out 31-24. to all right, so next we got the Bengals versus the Jets. Look, as far as I'm concerned, this is Joe Burrow's last chance or they got to hit that panic button in, in uh, Cincinnati because what the hell is going on over there? First of all, this offensive line looks horrendous. I know it's and it could be due to a chemistry uh, thing, just the fact that, you know, it's four new offensive linemen. So these guys haven't really played with each other too long. Uh, but Joe Burrow is on pace to get sacked almost as much as he did in his rookie year. And that and you all know how that ended up. He tore his ACL. The Bengals look bad. Look, these first two weeks, it's just plain and simple. The Bengals don't look like that. They, they look like they are absolutely, you know, head over, not head over heels, but they are absolutely having all the effects from the Super Bowl hangover, and it's just hitting them very badly. If they lose this game on Sunday to the Jets, that's just going to be a, mo a more proven point to the fact that they are absolutely having the Super Bowl hangover, and they probably won't be able to overcome it. Now, to, my, to that point, I will say this. Joe Flacco is the Browns' father, but he is de well. He he's not the Bengals' dad. Like they've had very good, you know, battles back and forth between each other. But this isn't going to be Joe Flacco's week. I think the Bengals finally do bounce back, or at least hopefully, because if if not, I ain't picking them no more. But essentially, I do think the Bengals come back this week. I do think Joe Burrow looks a lot better. Look, Jamar Chase got put in Alcatraz last week. He was he was in slave chains. They might they made uh, they made the movie Amistad after Jamar uh, Jamar Chase last week because that boy was on a slave ship he just was nowhere to be seen but 
this week, I think he bounces back. He has a much bigger week. And the Jets just had an insane, you know, rally last week. I just don't think all that's going to come to fruition again this week against the Bengals. The Bengals really know they got to win this one or shit's just not looking good. So I think they pull this one out 31 to 17. All right, so next up, we got the Raiders and the Titans. Look, maybe I gave the Raiders a little too much credit after the first week. Maybe I thought, you know, they'd be able to pull out uh, a, a close win against a Cardinals team that painfully, really, obviously needs DeAndre Hopkins to be anything successful. But clearly, they weren't able to do that last week. But look, they're playing the Titans this week. And as far as I'm concerned, the Titans have not shown any sort of life on their offense or defensive side. It doesn't look like anybody's really scared of Derrick Henry anymore. Now, with me saying that, he's probably bound to go off for like 120, 150 this week. He probably could because the Raiders defense really ain't that special. But essentially, at the end of the day, the Titans in general just aren't that special on the defensive side of the ball. De Devontae Adams was on, uh, must have been on the same slave ship that Jamar Chase and uh, Justin Jefferson were on because he only had two receptions for 12 yards last week and a touchdown. So I know for a fact that is not going to be the case this week. They are going to look to get their uh they're going to look to get Devontae Adams involved a lot more well he had seven targets but they're going to get they're going to look to get Devontae Adams open they're going to look to get Devontae Adams the ball this week Darren Waller look they just need to get the ball out because the Titans defense can't stop anybody you have plenty of weapons Hunter Renfro don't fumble the ball and you guys will be fine look I think the Raiders win this one 27 to 21 all right next up we got the Saints and the Panthers look you know football's back because Baker Mayfield's back to just not being able to close games out. But look, here we go. We got the Saints versus the Panthers. Look, the Saints had the Saints defense had a very good performance last week. They did everything they could to hold Brady and the Bucks to any any sort of points to make sure that the Saints could possibly score. But the Saints offense just wasn't enough against the Bucks defense, which I kind of knew that. But here we go this week. Look, the Panthers just don't look good in the first two weeks. I mean, they look like they are trying to figure out what they are offensively. They're trying to figure out what their identity is. Granted, like Christian McCaffrey had 105 yards, but to me, I just don't think they've really found that balance between using McCaffrey and, you know, actually using the passing offense to its advantages. If there is any advantages in that passing offense, it's really probably just DJ Moore. But Against the the Saints, the Saints defense is absolutely good. Is absolutely fantastic. Like they're really good. I just think they're going to be able to contain Baker. It's really going to come down to the fact if Jameis Winston wants to win this game, which I pray he does, because you can beat the Panthers. This isn't this isn't really going to be you know a game that is too complicated. You just don't need to turn the keep the turnovers down, Jameis. You can win this game because the Saints defense will cause turnovers. Baker's probably going to turn the ball over at least three times in this game. I think it's just going to be a very bad show for Baker. I don't know how. I don't. I don't. Think think it'll be a blowout well it, it could be because baker could either really the saints defense could either cause a lot of turnovers and it's going to get ugly really quick or baker's going to hold them in there until the last minute and turn the ball over at the last second so either way a baker turnover is coming it just depends on whether it's going to be early or late and that depends on the outcome of the game i'm going to say that he does it more earlier than late so i think the panthers end up uh losing this one i got the saints 34 panthers 20 all right so next up we got the ravens and the patriots so look you know, I got to give my fan perspective on this game, and then I got to give my non-biased fan perspective of this game. So, from a fan's perspective, look, we're 0-6 in Foxborough. We have not won in, like, years. Uh, well, no, we're 0-6 in Foxborough as far as the regular season goes. Uh, we're 2-10 and all time. Probably, I think the last time we probably won in Foxborough was, like, a Joe Flacco playoff moment, if I'm not mistaken. But, look, we just don't win in Foxborough. But, at the same time, they came off the most ass performance of all time last week. Well, the defense did. Lamar Jackson was absolutely phenomenal from start to finish. Actually, the offense, except for the run game, because the run game is still atrocious, the offensive passing game was phenomenal from start to finish. The run game's ass... You guys need to get J.K. Dobbins back in there because I can't watch it anymore. I can't watch Kenyon Drake. I can't watch Mike Davis. I can't watch these guys try to make plays. I can't. Look, I swear. <laughs> I swear. I swear. I swear. I swear. If y'all put Justice Hill out there again, man, I'm just going to. I'm just going to lose it i'm gonna absolutely lose it man i had to watch justice hill literally miss a wide open gap for a, a, a 60 yard house call to a two to the touchdown a 60 yard house call he missed the, a big gap and decided to run into two blockers no now granted a lot of people are well, not a lot of people but ravens fans are trying to allude to the fact that maybe it's the line that's not giving these guys the gaps that they need to make plays no i just don't think we have any playmakers back there now if jk and gus get back there and we're still having the same issues okay yes maybe it's time to address the line but as long as we have a running back running into blockers and missing missing gaping holes like maybe he didn't even have that was the biggest hole 
He is probably going, Justice Hill is probably going to ever have all season to run through, and he just didn't take it. So, no, I'm not really going to blame this on the line. I think the Ravens in general just need to get it together on defense. Absolutely need to get it together on defense because Mike McDonald, I don't know what the fuck you were scheming up last week, but that was absolutely shit. That wasn't even close to what playing what a Raven means. And honestly, you're making that not, well, I can't say you're making that definite, that, you know, that phrase look bad because it's, it, it wasn't really looking good last year. The fact that we were giving up 500 yards, we were also injury bugged. I promise you, Wink Martindale would not have that defense looking like they did yes, uh, not yesterday, but on Sunday. And you just got to step it up. Harbaugh, you got to step it up. I do think the Ravens pull this one out because they don't really have a choice because essentially if they want to keep Lamar Jackson, they got to prove to him that the pieces around him can perform and can actually help him, you know, win when he has magnificent days as he did on Sunday because to waste a performance like that is absolutely baffling to waste an a, a to waste a great performance like that on Sunday is just absolutely ridiculous I don't understand how that even comes to pass but the Ravens did it somehow some way there's also been very legendary comebacks for some teams that have meltdowns in the fourth quarter like that statistically I'm hoping this is one of them and the Ravens are just going to pull this one out oh I do I guess I do have to give a non-biased perspective too the Ravens better kick that ass. Just as simple as that. I said that last week too, but I think the Ravens come into here. Like I said, they're 0-6 all time. I think that's going to be stated like multiple times though this week and get the commentators jinx. So no, the Ravens are going to come in here and handle business. I think we score 31-17. All right, so look, next up, we got the Vikings and the Lions. Look, maybe last week I gave Kirk a little too much credit. Well, not really, because I, I, it's not really, when I, when I go on Vikings, if I ever do go on like Vikings rants this year and I'm praising the Vikings for doing this, that, and the third, it's really not because of Kirk Cousins. It's because I really believe in their coach and I really just believe in Justin Jefferson a lot and Dalvin Cook whenever they decide to use him. But look, the, the Vikings are coming off an absolutely abysmal performance last week, offensively and defensively. They just got killed by the uh, Eagles the entire time. They're playing a very gritty Lions team this week, but look, at the end of the day, Kevin O'Connell is going to want to put up points. He's going to want to turn that offense around to do a lot better than they did this week, and I think that's going to come all come to pass. Like I said, the Lions are very gritty. The Lions are going to fight. Anytime you go against the Lions, they're going to do whatever they can to compete. Dan Campbell's got these boys ready to play some serious football this week, so it's not going to be a cakewalk for the Vikings, but I do think they're going to pull it out. I think Kirk has a much better week this week than he does last, and I think the Vikings pull this out 34-27. to all right, so next up, we got the Eagles and Commanders. Look, Commanders fans are scared now, or let me go back to calling you guys Skins fans that you lost last week. But, I mean, we did too, but you're the Skins, so losing for you is a lot more painful than it is for us. Well, at, at least, you know, in overall terms, th this week our loss was a lot more painful than the Redskins' loss. But either way, look, I'm looking forward to this game because the Redskins, delusional Redskins fans base that thought that they would be able to compete with the Eagles and after Monday night, I'm pretty sure they know the answer to that is no. Hell no, you can't compete with the Eagles. Jalen Hurts is him. Jalen Hurts is that. He That Eagles defense, Darius Slay, oh my God. Like I said, they Darius Slay, Byron Murphy, at Trey, Di Trey Diggs, and whoever else was covering Jamar last week, because I saw, you know, Trey was only covering one side of the one side of the field most of the time, and when Jamar was over there, he was on Amistad. Look, Darius Slay, Byron Murphy, and Trey Diggs all escorted these receivers, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Devontae Adams to a slave ship and locked them up there for the rest of the week. Granted, like I said, these guys are due for very big um very big weeks this week, but Darius Slay is going to absolutely put Terry McLaurin in the same chains that he did be, that he did Justin Jefferson last week. Look, man, the Eagles' defense is just absolutely insane. Like, up front, man, Jordan Davis, look, there's this, a crazy stat that I didn't pay attention to where he when he, Jordan Davis is on the field, they only allow, like, two, two rush yards per attempt, but when he's not, it's, like, 10. So that gave me the illusion to – that gave me the illusion that – um the run defense is absolutely atrocious. It's not when Jordan Davis is on the field, so I gotta I gotta be called out when I'm wrong. So I was definitely wrong about that. They can definitely strap up in the run game, and the Redskins just don't have enough to do anything on this on, on this Eagles team, man. It's gonna be a very simple one. It's e pretty easy game right here, man. It's gonna be 37 to 20. All right, so next up we got the Chiefs and the Colts. Look, the difference between the Colts going 0-3 and the Bengals going 0-3 is the fact that the AFC South is absolutely ass. So the fact that Colts can still go 0-3 and possibly still make a playoff push, which I definitely think they can, they're not going to beat the Chiefs, though. The, Chief, the Colts have looked absolutely horrendous these first two weeks, and just to not put up any points against the Jaguars at all is not a good look going into this week. It clearly mean look, I mean, granted, you got the Colts didn't have Michael Pittman or Alec Pierce last week, so they were missing their wide receiver 1-2, and, and they just had to go with backups. 
it's not going to be as bad as a performance as it was last week, but the Chiefs are just too good, especially without the fact, especially with the fact that they don't have the Colts don't have Darius Leonard right now. It's just not going to really look good for them at all. The Colts look very lost without Darius Leonard out there in the field. That's their that's their anchor. That's the anchor to their entire defense. That's literally the motor that makes that defense run. And without him him on the field, the Colts just look absolutely lost. So look. It's going to be a very simple game for me this week. The Colts will bounce back at some point after this. Won't be this week, though, so I got the Chiefs winning this one 31-17. to All right, so next up we got the Texans and Bears. Look, this game is disgusting. It's as simple as that. I don't, I, I don't know who's going to win this game. I just know the Texans are not really playing to win. But one thing I am seeing from the Texans is that they compete. The Texans are going to want to go out there and compete. They're going to be competitive as possible. The Bears just simply got owned by the Packers again. But like that's not... That's not anything new. Like you've been owned by Aaron Rodgers for years. Like since your friend, since Aaron Rodgers stepped in the league, he he literally owns you guys. He answered the question. We he, we still know that he owns you. The the Bears are at home. They're gonna try to bounce back from a very bad loss against the Packers. I am going to pick the Bears simply because I just don't think the Texans are playing to win. Like I said, I think the Texans like like last week. I feel like the Texans could have. That was another game. I feel like the Texans could have won if they wanted to. I think the Texans could have beat the Broncos. But the reason they're not is because they need those draft picks. So they're literally playing to lose. I'm telling you, you're gonna find this trend throughout the week. I think the Texans are literally just competing up until a certain point to make sure they look good, and so they're not looking like they're tanking. But then at the last minute, they call a play or do whatever they need to to lose this thing. So so I think that's how this game is gonna go as well. So I got the Bears winning this one, 23 to 20. All right, so look, next up we got the Jaguars and the Chargers. Now, after that Chiefs game, it's going to be a pretty easy cakewalk for the Chargers for the next few weeks. So I got the Chargers really blowing some teams out, and this is definitely one of them. Granted, they need to involve Austin Eckler into the offense because they, like, whatever they're doing with these running backs, this running back committee that they're trying to, you know, create back there, it just ain't working. For you to take Sony for you to take Austin Eckler out in the first in the first quarter of that game last week and have Sony Michelle do two goal line runs for some odd reason when Austin Eckler is right there and probably would have got into that box for you makes no sense at all. I just need them to involve Austin Eckler into the offense. One for fantasy purposes and two just because I feel like if you actually get Austin Eckler involved in your offense, you can actually move the ball a lot better and be a lot better on offense. Granted, they didn't have Keenan Allen their, you know, short route runner where he can, you know, catch the ball and get down they only had their big catch guy in Mike Williams. They did. I did think they would kind of miss Keenan Allen last week, but they're not. If hopefully, you know, whether or not Keenan Allen plays this week, the Chargers' defense is absolutely stupendous. Like they, they are crazy on defense. They can absolutely give the bit. The, they're going to give Trevor Lawrence the business this week. They're going to cause a lot of turnovers. Derwin James is out there to hit niggas, and I, I just feel bad for any. I hope Christian Kirk is out there ready to protect himself. Don't fumble that ball, young man, because the Chargers are going to want you to. But I got the Chargers winning this one, 34 to 20. All right, so next up, we got the Rams versus the Cardinals. Now, look, the Rams still don't look to me after last week like they are the Super Bowl, the past Super Bowl champions. They still look like they're a little rusty. They still look like they're trying to find out the kinks to their offense. I think due to the fact that Allen Robinson is there and they they did get him a touchdown. They got him four receptions last week. I think they're still trying to find ways to get him involved in the offense. They're still trying to find out what this offense really is. And while they're still trying to figure all that out, granted, I just know for a fact that the Cardinals need DeAndre Hopkins badly. They did beat the Raiders last week, but the Raiders' defense is abysmal. So, essentially, you're going up against the Rams' defense, which is a lot better. But, I and, yeah, so, with that, with all that, I know the Cardinals are a lot better than, you know, I think they are. I just don't think they're going to pull this one out. I think it's going to be pretty close, though, because, like I said, the Rams just aren't showing me that they're that Super Bowl juggernaut that they were last year. Or they're just not... They're just not convincingly, convincingly beating teams like they should be. Granted, they played the Bills week one. I really mean the Falcons. They just didn't... The the way that that game ended just really didn't give me a sense of, okay, the Rams know what they're doing. The Rams are back. They figured this out. They know how they're going to go from here on out. They still got a lot of question marks to figure out. I think they figured them out in this game and then, you know, a couple games after. But I got the Rams winning this one 30-26. to 26. All right, so next up, we got the Falcons versus the Seahawks. Look, this this is another gross game. I don't have any interest in this game at all, but I do got the Falcons beating the Seahawks, though. I do have the Falcons coming. I did, I think last week I did say that the Falcons would probably go 0 and something. They compete for the first pick. They set their, their season in stone for the most part. But, I mean... When, it, when I'm looking at these two teams, I see a team in the Falcons that have enough potential to get enough stops, to get enough, to do something on offense, to just, with Drake London, and if Arthur Smith actually, actually tries to use Kyle Pitts this week, they can beat the Seahawks. There, there's enough on that Falcons end to beat the Seahawks. I'm not... 
hugely confident in that pick, but I feel like I didn't pick enough upsets this week. I feel like I'm really just going with the status quo. So I gotta go. I gotta do a left, uh, do a curveball somewhere. So this is my curveball. I'm gonna pick the Falcons to win this one. I'm not like 100% on that pick, but I I don't think. Look, the Seahawks really didn't show me much last week. The Falcons did a little better. I'm really basing it off of the fact just that. The Seahawks just look very slum on offense, man. There's just not really much there. Geno Smith, I am I put am I putting more my faith more in Geno Smith over Mar- Mariota? Not necessarily. I'm putting my faith more in the fact that Drake London is a dog and the fact that they know that they need to get Kyle Pitts involved in this offense. And I think the Falcons should just make more stops than the Seahawks defense can. So that's why I got the Falcons winning this one, 29 to 23. All right, so we got the Bucks and the Packers next up. Look, this is one of the weirdest Rodgers versus Brady matchups we've had probably ever just just for the fact that Aaron Rodgers doesn't have Devontae Adams, Brady doesn't have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, and has to rely on Russell Gage and Rashad Perryman this game. And look, personally, the t- these two offenses are in hell because the defenses are just absolutely spectacular. Like, the Packers' defense is very good. Jair Alexander and Razul Douglas can probably guard Rus- Russell Gage and... Uh, Rashad Perryman in their sleep. It's not really going to be much of a contest for them. Uh, and for the Bucks defense, look, the, the Packers receiving core ain't that talented. It's really those running backs. And, you know, the Bucks can probably contain them as well. So what it's really going to come down to is which one of these two great quarterbacks can just maintain the game and do enough to just get down the field and not really turn the ball over and... Honestly, guys, if I had to pick somebody, look, it's really just because Brady's receiving core is out. And like I said, Jair Alexander and Mazul Douglas against Russell Gage and Bashar Perryman, that's light work any day. So they're going to be expecting the Bucks to run the ball. And while the Packers run defense isn't the best, I feel like with no receivers on in the game, like the Packers have more of a chance to contain that. So I'm personally going to go with the Packers here, and this one is going to be a really close game. But look, I think the Packers pulled this one out just due to the fact that there's no there's no playmakers for the for the Bucks on that other end, man. There's nobody that can make the big play. There's no Mike Evans. Like they don't have their guy to go to. Like Russell Gage and Bashar Perryman can make plays, but they're look. That's Jair Alexander over there. Like that's not that's no it's no fly zone. Jair Alexander is one of the best corners in football. There's, that's a no fly zone over there. So I'm going to have to go with the Packers in this one. I'm going to pick them to win 27 Bucks 24. All right, so for our Sunday night game, we got the Niners and the Broncos. Look, if Trey Lance was playing, I'd say, look, we still got some questions to figure out. We still got some question marks on that field. We still got some things to figure out for the 49ers. But as far as I'm concerned, Jimmy G's back. And while we do wish Trey Lance a a restful recovery, the 49ers are ready to play some real football now. They're not doing any more experiments. Jimmy G's back. They got their guy as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, they're ready to play some football. And Russ looks like shit. I don't – an APB needs to be put out for Russell Wilson because I don't know who that guy is. Is, but this is just a commercial version of Russell Wilson. Like this isn't the dog Russell Wilson that I've seen, the guy that really wants to, you know, go out there and win, make game game changing plays, man. This guy has looked slum these first two weeks. And granted, I don't think it's getting any better against the 49ers, man. The 49ers, like I said, they're ready to play some football. They got Jimmy G back. They know they already know how to play football with Jimmy G. Like when I tell you the team's morale literally went night and day. When Trey Lance went down and Jimmy G went back in and started making plays, like that team just looked like they had a whole breath of fresh air right there. Granted, it it sucks to say because you don't want you want to wish Trey Lance a a speedy recovery, but look, at the end of the day, it just at at the end of the day, it just really looked like that's not their guy. Jimmy G is their guy for the year. They're ready to play some real football now, and I got the 49ers whooping that ass, 31 to 17. And for our Monday night game, look, we got the Cowboys versus the Giants. Look. I got to give the Cowboys credit because I thought they were going to get their ass whooped last week. I thought the Bengals were going to bounce back. But nope, the Cowboys shut me up. They did their thing. But look, you're in Giants territory this week. And look, I'm riding that Giants train to 3-0, man. Because I think these boys are going to kick your ass. Now, granted, not not like the score-wise, but I think the Giants will win. (laughs) Either way, look, Brian Dabble's got these boys playing with a whole new swag. They got these boys looking real good on defense. Look, Wink, Wink Martindale, I miss you. But look, do do what you can in New York. Make make us look absolutely foolish for hiring Mike McDonald. <laughs> Granted, people are gonna see that and think I'm just I'm just calling it quits on Mike McDonald. No, but he needs to do a lot better because I promise you, if Wink was our coordinator right now, that performance on Sunday wouldn't happen. Mike McDonald needs to step it up. So I'm gonna be on your ass all all year or for the rest of the year. No, I'm on your ass, boss. You got to do a lot better. But on to the Giants and Cowboys. Look. Giants are going to be 3-0, and and this is going to be an absolute, it may sound crazy to you, but look, the Giants are at home, I don't think the Cowboys are that, I think Cooper Rush is some shit, and like, granted, he beat Joe Burrow and, you know, the Bengals, but I just think the Bengals are either, they're as shitty as we think they are too, or I don't know what's going on over there, but 
Uh, I just don't think Cooper Rush is that good. I think the Giants defense is a lot better than what people are anticipating, or at least they're playing. Yeah, Wink's got those boys playing some real defensive ball over there, so I'm excited. Um, I'm not putting that much my faith in Daniel Jones, really, but Saquon Barkley, I'll put my faith in that guy, so I think the Giants are definitely going to pull this one out 27-20. to 20. All right, guys, look, those are my picks for week three. Thank you so much for watching. What do you guys think is going to happen this week? What's your upset of the week? What's your biggest blowout of the week? What do you guys, what's your guys' predictions for stats? Who do you think the MVP of the week is going to be? Do you think anybody passes Tua's performance last week? Look, I hope not. Well, actually, I hope so, so everybody can just stop talking about it. But either way, look, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. This is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.